So this is the real world. How can I make my car look exquisite without breaking the bank and spending my whole life away polishing? Let's get out of here and go blow the car off. And by the time we get to the shop, if I'm not an idiot, it'll be clean. I'm sorry, officer. I was drying off my car. <laughs> What's up, people? We are back for Casey's 80s Garage, and today we are going to polish and ceramic coat the Porsche 928. I've also got my steering wheel finished. The adult apple juice from when my wife was cutting my hair and I was stitching the steering wheel did not influence me too badly, and it looks rather nice. You're gonna see it. We're also gonna look more carefully at the Pasha interior while I bolt the seats in and get it going. Uh, another note, a nice fan sent me this jacket, which had been collecting dust in his house. It says Indy Porsche Motorsports, Porsche Motorsports, and it looks kind of baggy from the 80s. That's because it is, and this is an actual teen jacket from the Porsche Indy car teams back in the 80s. It's super cool. He said he'd use it for personal or uh, sell it to help support Genius Garage. So if there's any Porsche geeks out there that would love this jacket for Porsche Motorsports, an actual Indy team jacket from the 80s, then highest bidder to Genius Garage gets it as a thank you gift. But anyway, so ceramic coating this, does the stuff actually work like everybody talks about? It has made my MR2, my 944, and my Viper all look gorgeous. But my 944 is sitting outside and I have not washed it or garaged it since I did anything to it, which was probably a month or more ago. It's been rained on, snowed on, and driven in dusty, horrible conditions. So let's go hop in it right now. I'm gonna take it to just a general car wash and not even wash it properly. I'm just gonna blast it and rinse it and see how much dirt comes off because I think that'll be the best test. Let's go. Wait, I don't need this. Steering wheel. Casey away. All right, people, so I am looking forward to doing this and seeing how well it works because frankly, I don't have time to wash cars normally. <laughs> so I hope it works. But funny story, so you guys know I, so I will uh, tease about Porsche Club of America and Porsche Club members and stuff. Hold on, let me. Let me fix this a little, it's getting kind of wonkous. Okay, so anyway, my wife and I were actually looking at a house to buy, like a neighborhood and all that. And so we were sitting in front of the house, like we went in the driveway and then I just pushed in the clutch and kind of rolled back to the sidewalk and we're looking at this place like, hey, hey, this is a project, what do we do with it? And um, some guy pulls up on the street beside us and makes a motion to like roll down the window and he was kind of aggressive about it. And I'm like, oh God, we're in trouble. What, like people are mad at us or like, we're like not nice enough for your neighborhood or something like this. And I opened the door and there wasn't a hello or anything. And I was driving the 944 and the guy goes, are you in the local PCA? <laughs> I was like, uh, uh oh. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so he's a nice gentleman with a 914 and he likes the 944 and the 928. And um, I hope he doesn't watch my YouTube videos now. <laughs> so anyway, that's my story. We got to wash this car. Uh, or rinse it off and see if it works. And actually, I think the reason it looks as nice as it does right now is because after it was coated, it was so slippery. Like I took pictures, I'll show you now, of how insanely well the rain beat it up on this thing. I've never had a car do it that nice because I never, frankly, take care of my cars that well. Um, but it looked amazing, right? So every time it rained and got the car wet and I would go drive it, the rain would like slide off and take the dirt with it. So. I think if it was my normal car and it wasn't finished like this, it would already be dirtier. So I'm really curious to see what this car wash does. All right, you guys, so it's I mean, definitely dirty. I have not done this yet, so I might be just sticking my foot in my mouth. Um, but look away, I have to use my credit card. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Electronic ripoff machine is engaging. Oh, it is approved to rip me off. So there's spot-free rinse, which is supposed to be nicer or filtered. I'm just gonna go straight to rinse. Okay, this is my test. This is by no means the proper way to wash a car. What are you doing? 250, 330, what are you doing? It's just beeping at me. Oh, here we go. All right, rinse. Get it wet first, I guess. And then I'll come back and blast it off. That's my idea. I don't know if it's gonna work. At which point I'm either not arrogant because this is confidence based on experience and observation or I'm just lucky. And both of those are okay. Uh, and then naturally, as most other YouTubers do, if I screw up, I just won't show you. But I'm Casey Putch and I think you guys like to see it when things get screwed up. Because that's why Hoobie's Garage is popular. Because he screws everything up. 
I like you, Hoovy. I'm not knocking you. So I'm just gonna do this. And the way I figure it, I can't lose. I can't lose. I will rinse the bejesus out of this fine automobile. Come on, ceramic coating. Make me look cool. I'm not gonna wash this. I am a, an old millennial. I have newfangled ways of ceramic. I don't need to wa wax a car. I got random orbital buffers and ceramic coating. Yeah, what? What are you gonna do about it? Dry it? No, I'm gonna drive fast. I'm gonna blow the dirt right off. Blow the dirt off, yes. Currently the trolls are like, you know, I'd like his channel more if he wasn't so cocky. Casey sucks. Even when I'm doing this improperly, I will still try to do it intelligently. Yes. That's how I got through high school. Maybe I should edit that. I'm being a bad role model. My hand's getting tired. Ugh. That's what she said. Ugh. Yeah, all right. Four seconds, whatever. Okay, so what do we got? I think this is gonna work. It's beat it up pretty nicely, but any car looks good wet. So let's get out of here and go blow the car off. And by the time we get to the shop, if I'm not an idiot, it'll be clean. So how's my 80s uh, Porsche Motorsports jacket look? Pretty 80s? Yes. It's basically a windbreaker. The wind never stood a chance in the 80s. A Honda Civic in front of me. Lame. Yes, you should get out of my way. Be gone with you, Honda. <laughs> Don't you know I have the power of the 80s? Oh, yes. Feel the 80s. I'm sorry, officer. I was drying off my car. <laughs> and this is YouTube. I can't even listen to cool copyrighted 80s music. Lame. Well, one thing I noticed, you guys, is the windshield looks pretty darn clean with the exception of one smeared in bug spot, which I forgot about when I blasted. But, so wipers are on it, and that is really clean. So, let's see if I'm an idiot or this actually works, or both. Okay, so there's still some water on it because it just rained, but honestly, that looks really good. So here's the rain, that's not really fair assessment. Doggone it, the rain's ruining it, but, um, you know, for frankly, not actually washing this properly, look at this, like basically everything is gone except for like the really caked in stuff with like, that needs a little bit of mechanical scrubbing, like some tar and crap from the road. Honestly, you guys, like this is what I was hoping for. Like if you do a good job and you polish it and then ceramic coat it really well, honestly, you don't even really have to wash it if you're just gonna daily drive it, you can just rinse it off and let it air dry if you go on the highway and you're like 95% of the way there. And then you can just use a really mild soap uh, on this with no silicon in it or anything like that or no wax and you're gonna be golden. So let's go polish the 928 today. I'm gonna show you getting the surface prepared, the random orbital buffer and some of the details. One of those is which, which I think Porsche and Ferrari people and everybody with a badge will see. This is the original crest on the car. It's faded. It's got lots of old wax and rubbing residue from all the years prior. So this isn't bad, but it's gonna be really nice for my toolbox. And I got a new one that's appropriate. I also want to show you the difference. So this is a proper replacement for that vintage of the 928. This is what it looks like. Also, you want to use a new rubber gasket when you put it on there. And, and uh, the other thing that's very important is to remove emblems and things like that for polishing it. That way it'll look brand new when you get it on. You don't get crap in your emblem. <laughs> like the old one here. But anyway, so this is the proper vintage one. And this is the one that came off of the Genius Garage boxer that we tore down for the Lycan. Now this is gonna get sold and the proceeds go to Genius Garage. But I just wanna show you guys the difference here between a newer one and the older one. The horse is different size where it says Stuttgart, the inner crest is different. And then of course Porsche is in black there versus the old one. So this, I will put these aside. And then of course the the one that I purchased here, and you can get these at different various Porsche restoration places. Uh, I'll reuse the old nuts behind it. I've got a nice gasket here, and uh, I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave this on there for now so you can see it. But, you know, as fancy and cutesy as it is to get a new emblem, this does just add a lot to the car. So when I buff this out and do all the details, you wanna have those details nice. So why don't you come on over here. I'm gonna open the door. Let's look at the interior. I wanna talk about the steering wheel. Do I sound like a dad? The steering wheel, kids. So here we are. Now, a couple of things I had to do. So the threads are at the end where they're tied off. 
I also soaked the little knot in super glue so the knots can't come undone. I'll be tucking this underneath and I'll have to glue the edges of the leather done. But this is gonna be very nice. Obviously the pasta looks great. I still have to bolt the seats in. But as a note, the steering wheel is gonna still need a little bit of effort because obviously it's not bare. This is the inner horn button area. Fortunately, there's no cracks or issues, but this needs to be, and I gotta decide whether I wanna treat it or shoot it with a trim paint. I may actually shoot it with a type of, of uh, paint that looks really good to uh, make it look super fresh and black. But the reason I'm getting this out right now, I wanna see where this goes in relation to the edge of the le leather so I know how I want to finish off the leather. Fortunately, that comes right to the edge and sort of covers all that up, but it's gonna be important now, while I finish the last touches on the steering wheel, to glue down the edges of my uh, leather here really well so you don't see any wrinkles, a real nice finish and edge, and I can tuck the, the knots and the ends of the strings up inside there. So I'll do that the whole way around, and then I gotta decide if I wanna use a little bit of heat and protect those threads so they don't melt to just shrink out the little bit of wrinklage here that you'll get sometimes. So that's, that's what's gotta happen there. As a note, we'll open up the trunk and I'll also show you the front shrouding. All right, here. <laughs> Maybe I should work on my latches too with a little bit of lube. All right, so we got the front shrouding here and I left the little screws in here where it attaches. That also gives you the swipe for the horn contact. This is very nice, but it's faded. And the fading of the old plastic is very similar, if you turn around here, to the plastic on my Top Gun Ninja motorcycle build. You, if you want to look in close, you can literally see how the black plastic of turn signals fades to gray. Now, a lot of people talk about this, and there's some down-home kind of remedies, which include taking a blowtorch to it carefully. I'm not going to do that with my delicate Porsche part. Now, what I had with a, a lot of luck, there's ways you can treat it and make it nice, but frankly, what I'm going to use probably wax and uh, grease remover from paint prep really clean it up maybe give it a gentle scuff with a soft scotch bright and i will shoot this with a nice black trim plate paint uh, it'll look really good also there's a hairline crack that you can't see but that's my opportunity to use some plastic panel bonding just on the inside and fix that the other thing quite frankly too where this screws onto the steering wheel the old brackets have been broken so i will need to bond uh, something on there so you have something to screw into but there's really no shame in that um, because even your old motorcycle look this is where the panel goes on in the motorcycle and kind of fits in place well that broke off the panel so I've got to fix that there too just common things for the plastic trim of stuff in the 80s I'll come back to that in a later episode but I just wanted to show you guys so right now let's prepare this thing for the ceramic coating tomorrow and also tomorrow I want to shoot those trim pieces and get the steering wheel back on here we go so here's what I got going. I've got a nice swirl remover finish here, and you can use about any. This is not a fine cut cleaner. This isn't real heavy, but this is getting down to the little details of swirl finish. Now, the first thing I did the other day was use a clay bar or a synthetic clay bar type treatment. I prefer to use these pads. They have like a rubbery type finish, and you can use a quick detailer. And when the car's clean, you literally spray it with a quick detail and use this rubbery mat, and it takes off those surface imperfections. Now, since you don't get to see that on the 928 reference, go back to when I ceramic coated the Viper. Did a really good job of showing that. So I got my pad here. I've been working a little bit. It's getting a little bit dirty, but it's still working very well. And uh, keep in mind, this is going to be a very nice everyday car. This isn't going to be one of those that get parked in a collection only brought out of Concorde that has to be a polished Fabergé egg. So this is the real world. How can I make my car look exquisite without breaking the bank and spending my whole life away polishing? Well, you get it right, it already looks decent. And I'm gonna use the swirl remover here with my random orbital. And the tips with the random orbital, obviously you don't wanna globber it up too much. Use very light pressure, and you wanna make sure that it's still spinning. If it's just vibrating, it's not doing what it needs to do. So you can see that it's spinning. I'm using very, very gentle pressure, and I'm letting the pad and the orbital do the work and getting it ready. So what, and I'm gonna do this to the whole car. But before I do places, and the car's pretty darn clean, I've already looked it over, but it is in a shop, and shops will get imperfections. But as I do the sides, and I get below the belt line of the car, kind of halfway down, where they classically get dirtier, or road debris, and things stick in a tar, I'm gonna be very careful in checking that again before I hit it with a random orbital. Because the last thing you wanna have happen is for your pad to pick up some sort of dirt or grit 
and then you just random orbital grit your whole body. That, that would be a disaster. Also, I'm being very mindful around here of staying away from those edges. The random orbital and the compound I have is, is rather uh, benign. And uh, this big uh, smooth area here, I can go over with no problem. And frankly, I could hit this right on the edge here gently and it's not gonna hurt it. But on harsh edge cars that you'll see a lot in the 70s and 80s, it's very easy to rub through. As a note, that's what happened to the Scirocco. It, the person that had it before used a, a, what I'm sure is a, a rotating hardcore buffer and they rubbed right through the paint on the edges. So I've got to come up with a very creative way to fix the Scirocco and make it look nice. So using a random orbital with a, a relatively gentle swirl remover on these things, you're gonna be okay. But you wanna be very, very careful and mindful of things like that because just a little bit of impatience or over aggressiveness can destroy your entire paint job. And this is a very pretty dark gray metallic done quite a long time ago. So the likelihood of matching that paint is not too good. So obviously I wanna take really good care of it and uh, make it look really nice and keep it that way for a very long time. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Show you guys the progress. You gotta be picky with your microfibers. This one's been used a little bit, it's kinda of skunky, but it has been washed. All right. And the other thing too is you gotta be really careful with your your buffing pads and washing them in between and keeping them treated nicely and your microfibers, um, especially in a shop like this where we do work and sometimes metal work and grinding or welding, if you get one teeny tiny piece of metal in it, you really quickly make a mess of your beautiful paint. So you gotta protect those things. All right. So now that's looking quite nice. It could be better. It will be better because we're going to ceramic coat it. Now obviously this is just the front fender. I'm going to continue to do the rest of the car. I had done it just initially on the door and this side of the roof and I'll be coming back. I have a gentleman actually that's going to come in and hopefully I'll get to show you that guys where there's some teeny tiny just barely visible maybe like the tiniest dent like not hail but just some little thing that happened. So to make it perfect, he can come in there and the paintless dent repair guys, the real good old guys, they're great about floating that stuff out and the Scirocco needs it badly. So I'm gonna make sure it's perfect. But I'm glad you guys came in and I'm getting excited to drive this Shark. I've got oils to freshen everything up, the transaxle and the engine, as well as doing the brakes. And from there, I'll be doing the timing belts and belts, checking for things like vacuum leaks and making sure everything is tuned and timed and uh, we don't have any issues with uh, fuel lines. But uh, I'm really looking forward to driving this. I'm glad you guys are following along. Okay guys, so we're really getting there. I love how the swirl remover works. This is the least uh, aggressive way to hit the spot we need. Also, it's not adding any sort of silicon or wax-based stuff to it. Uh, but that being said, sometimes you'll have a little bit. So before I prepare, sh do this tomorrow with the ceramic, uh, I am going to alcohol swipe the entire car. But right now, this is the opportunity. You want to get rid of any of the little swirl marks, imperfections, scratches like that. Because the ceramic coating is amazing, but it's not like a miracle worker. You still have to make your paint look decent before. And then when you put it on, it gives it those layers of glass. So the reason I'm talking about it, and I actually like this stuff. So the 944 we took out, and it was sort of cloudy, and you really couldn't see it. Um, but I did a crap job washing. I didn't wash it. You guys saw, I just rinsed it off kind of aggressively. And that car's been sitting outside for over a month. Like I've driven it in rain and snow, everything. And I have not washed it. I haven't done anything to it. And the thing that was amazing to me is after I coated it and it looked beautiful and it would rain on it, it beat it up like crazy. And then everything on it, the second I drove and there was any area, it just went, shoo, it was gone. So it always looked really good. So I kind of had to let it sit outside and get as filthy as I could. And that was about it. But right now it looks freaking fantastic. It looks 90, 95% as good 
as if I spent like in the olden days when I'd spend like an hour washing my car by hand and drying it off perfectly. And the thing that I was amazed at afterward, you guys didn't see it, I'll show you now, is that the paint when it dried, um, or you know, when the water on it dried, there's some little water spots like on the back of the car where you don't get much air movement when you're going, but it looks freaking good. So anyway, you guys, that's why I'm really excited about it. And I hope you guys come back to see it coated and let's start getting this interior together. I wanna drive it. Catch you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed today's video and naturally that you will subscribe, but please click that bell so I can continue to bring you wholesome and entertaining automotive content. Also, a huge thanks to Avalon King Ceramic Coating. They're supporting this channel and making this all possible. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to using it on all of my vehicles, including my old dirt bike. Ceramic coating bonds directly to the surface of your paint, trim, and plastics to give a long-lasting shine that beats all waxes. It lasts for years and it's easy to maintain. I've got it on my Viper right now and my car has never looked this good. So give them a try. Again, thanks for watching and I look forward to see you next time.